Welcome to the Financial Coaches Podcast, where we talk about how to build your practice from startup to scale up while being the kind of coach your clients crave. Finally, a podcast for financial coaches. Here are your hosts, Maria Casillas and Cody Sizemore. Hello, and welcome back to the Financial Coaches Podcast. My name is Cody Sizemore, and I'm joined here by the lovely Maria Casillas. Maria, how you doing? I'm doing fantastic. Thank you. Good, good. Hey, so before we hop into today's discussion, which both of us are actually very excited for, because we haven't talked about this kind of thing for a while now. Um, But before we hop into that, I want to just say a few things. So first and foremost, if you haven't joined our Facebook group yet, you're missing out on some awesome stuff and some, some honestly, like we meet like weekly for co-working Wednesdays and we have like monthly meetups and we have good discussions and stuff like that. So if you haven't joined that yet, go ahead and join it. It's totally free to join. Um, and it's called new money habits, financial coaches. And we just love to see you there. You know, we want to connect with you. You can ask questions there. You can even give us topics to talk about on this podcast. Uh, because you know, sometimes we're like, Hey, what are we going to talk about? (laughs) You know, so any sort of uh, suggestions would be awesome. And it would be cool to meet you guys too. So hop in there, New Money Habits Financial Coaches. And also, if you guys want to take a moment and leave a review or a rating on on the show, we would really appreciate that too. Um, You know, that's just a good way for us to, you know, see what you like, what you don't like, all that kind of stuff. And it also helps kind of boost things out to to uh, more financial coaches to help them reach this this show so that they can help, you know, get their business off the ground or amplify it from there. Mm-hmm. So we would really appreciate both of those two things. Um, and with that being said, Maria, let's Cody? just go ahead and dive right in. Does that sound good? Absolutely. Looking okay. forward to it. Awesome. So what we want to talk about today is really some, some uh, tangible things that you can do to get started as a new financial coach. So we, we understand that the listeners on this show, they're all over the place. Like there's, there's coaches who are listening to this and they've been coaching for years. There's coaches who've been, you know, who are listening to this, who are within their first year. And then there's other people who haven't actually started as a financial coach, but they're very interested in it. Mm-hmm. And, you know, they, they're looking on ways to get started. Like, like what's the first couple steps? Like what are the few things that I really need, uh, in order to get started or what would make it easier to get started? So for today's episode, we've, we decided that we wanted to speak directly to that new or aspiring coach, you know, anyone who's, who hasn't started yet, or they're, you know, within their first couple months and they're kind of trying to figure out things, um, and just give you guys some tangible things that might be able to help make things a little bit more smoother, and to get you off the ground running as fast as possible. Yeah. So if you're a type A checklister personality type person, this one is for you because we're going to give mm-hmm. you some fun stuff to make a list and ch- start checking it twice. That's right. Mm-hmm. And we're going to find out. <laughs> if you're Everyone on here is nice. I'm sure of it. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. So let's just dive right into this list. Shall okay. We? Yeah. Okay. Cool. So we were kind of discussing a few things that we thought would be helpful for people to have when they're first starting off. Um, And I think that there's, that there's several things, but one in particular that I remember when I first started doing this, it was like a complete game changer. So much headache was, (laughs) was taken away from me. It was Mm -hmm. so much easier. Um, I, I, like I felt, legit, like all those different types of things. <laughs> and, and this one thing, as simple as it is, it's having a scheduler. Oh, you know, yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Like mm-hmm. something that you can send people uh, to just say, hey, like, here's my scheduling link. Go ahead and find something that works for you. Rather than being like, hey, like, you want to talk? Awesome. So when are you usually free? And then they give you like a few, few examples and you're like, Oh, well, you know, I'm not free at that time. So what about this day? And they're like, well, I have, you know, I take my cat to the vet that day, but are you free on Saturday? And it's like, well, I don't actually work on Saturdays, but I'm mm-hmm. free on Monday. Are you? Yeah, I'm free on Monday. How about five o'clock? Mm, well, I actually have dinner with my family at that time, but I could do, you know, four o'clock or, you know, like there's, 
Yeah. It's annoying. It goes forever. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> having a schedule so really, it streamlines that whole process for us. We don't have to go through that entire thing that you just did. <laughs> what a great monologue that was. Thank you. Um, <laughs> but also I think it, well, it puts the onus on the the client or the potential client because I'm a firm believer that we need to find ways of vetting potential clients. And this is one very simple and almost like a subconscious way of doing that. Because if that individual isn't willing to go to a calendar and choose a time that works well for them after you've already set all that up for them, then chances are they're not going to show up for anything anyway. So this just kind of gives that opportunity for us to go, how serious is this person about meeting with me? So I really like that. But I think the other thing that's really great is it helps us as coaches to set boundaries. And it gives us the opportunity to practice that setting of boundaries. Because I don't know about you, Cody, but I know that myself and many other coaches, especially newer ones, are just so full hearted that they are willing to do just about anything for just about anybody who could use Mm -hmm. their help. And we have a hard time setting those boundaries for ourselves. And what I really like about schedulers is it it gives you not only the ability to say, I don't work on Saturdays, like you mentioned, or I want to, you know, time block and only do one-to-one sessions during this day from this time to this time. But it also allows you to set buffers at least if you get a good scheduler, it allows you to set buffers and says, please don't schedule anything within 15 minutes of the time that the last one ends, as an example. So it gives us the opportunity to take a potty break, to go get a drink of water, to actually take care of ourselves in between some of these sessions, which if you're listening today and you don't have any clients that you're probably like, uh, just, you know, pee on your own time. But I'm telling you, when you start putting clients on a schedule like that, it, if you've got them back to back, it really is difficult sometimes to, you know, take care of yourself and not, not just show up hundred percent all the time. So I really like how it allows us to do that. And for that reason, it's one of the first things that I have done <laughs> in my practice. And it sounds like you did the same. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. And, and the buffer is super important because when I first got my scheduler, I didn't realize that you could do that. Mm. Um, and I was scheduling people or people were scheduling rather like back to back to back to back. Mm -hmm. And I was like, Oh my gosh, like I don't even have time to go to the bathroom or like, maybe I need like a 10 minute mental reset. Right. But I can't, I just have to like transition like right away. Mm -hmm. Um, and it made things very stressful. Uh, and then I found out that it had that feature and I was like, Oh, my problems are set. <laughs> <laughs> well, and if you find a scheduler that doesn't have that feature specifically, or in our case, like there was actually, um, you know, you, I'm, I'm part, we have a partnership with new many habits and part of the scheduler that we use, they had all of that built in, but then at the turn of the new year, they changed it. They used to have it according to user. So there were three of us users and we all got to set our own schedules with our own buffers, et cetera. But at the turn of the year, they changed it to where it went by appointment type. And so Mm -hmm. it actually did happen to me. I think that's probably why it's so fresh in my mind. It happened to me where I was at a volunteer event in a different air, like a different location from like 9 a.m. to 10 a.m. And then all of a sudden there was a 10 a.m appointment on my calendar. And it's because I technically had that availability, but the buffer had gone away. And I was, I was scrambling at the last minute to go, wait a minute, how do I ask this person if I can, you know, switch that appointment or put it off for an hour? And it just created a lot more of the frustration that I was trying to avoid in the first place. So Mm -hmm. um, now that I know that the scheduler does that, we've been able to um, switch things a little bit. But if your scheduler doesn't do that and you want a buffer, just create different times uh, different lengths, excuse me, for your session. So instead of setting an hour session, for example, do 50 minutes. Or right. instead of an hour and a half, do 75 minute sessions. So that way, when you're done with that, your client actually has an expectation that it will end at the quarter of an hour. And then you have that 15 minutes built in to take care of yourself. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, and another thing with these schedulers too is like, it makes you seem legit, which you are, by the mm-hmm. way. 
-hmm. but you know, to everyone else, it makes you seem legit to where, you know, instead of trying to go back and forth and find a time that works best, you can just send them like a, a link that's branded and just be like, Hey, here's my scheduling link. Go ahead and find the time that works best for you. Right. Even right. if it's the first client ever, they don't realize that they think that you have to do this in order to manage your entire roster of clients. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. So, um, a few schedulers that I'm aware of, um, I personally use one called Calendly. Mm -hmm. So it's like calendar, but instead of calendar, it's Calendly. So mm -hmm. L Y at the end, instead of ER. Um, I really like that one. I think it's really, really good. And, you know, it's very user friendly as well. And it's very, it's very visually appealing. Mm -hmm. um, but I know that there's other ones too. Like, I believe, Maria, I believe that you use something called Acuity. We right? do. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, so how do you like Acuity? I really like it. I love how once the appointment schedule, it's very easy to reschedule that. Uh, mm -hmm. You can cancel, reschedule, it, talk back and forth to somebody. It allows for you to uh, like have the client say, what is it that you'd like to talk about during this session? So there is some uh, opportunity for speak back and forth. And yeah, I mean, it, it has been completely streamlined, which is nice. I, I didn't know, again, that, <clears throat> excuse me, that they changed that over the course of the year. Uh, that new buffer thing. So that was one little curveball that was thrown our way. But other than that, it's been fantastic. Yeah. And um, I know that both of these also have the opportunity to um, integrate with different apps. So, you know, like, for example, like with Calendly, you can integrate it with your CRM or uh, like an email kind of thing to where it sends out like, emails, uh, for reminders, you know, it can send out text messages for reminders. Mm -hmm. Um, it can integrate with like a zoom account. Um, if you want to, you know, do zoom, um, you can even collect payments from it. Too. I was just going to say it can integrate with your payment system. Yep. 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 So, you know, but that's, that's not all super necessary to have when you're first starting something you can kind of work into. Mm -hmm. Um, but that does kind of go into a good segue of the other thing that I think that, you know, is pretty critical for people to have when they're first starting. Um, and that is to set up a zoom account, mm -hmm. right? Because as much as in-person coaching sounds like the way to go, um, and you can do in-person coaching if you want, you know, if it's people locally, uh, but you're, you're really pigeonholing yourself. Um, because like, there's going to be people outside of your city, outside of your state that need your help. And that wants to hire you as a coach, but you can't, you know, drive across the country and say, Hey, I'll meet you halfway kind of mm -hmm. thing. Um, so having a zoom account is really good for, for, you know, long distance coaching relationships, but it's also good for just convenience too. You know, like it's way easier to meet with people, um, out of the comfort of their own home or your own home. Uh, so there's no extra driving. There's, you know, all that time invested into it. Uh, so having a Zoom account is really, really important to have. Um, and there is a free version of Zoom, but I'm pretty sure that if you do free, it's limited to like 40 minutes, right? It is. Yeah. And it used to be only if you had three or more people on there, but they recently changed that to two. So even if you are just doing a one-to-one, -one, it, it's going to cut you off after 40 minutes. Yeah. 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 So, you know, you'll want to do a paid version of Zoom. The good news is that both of these, these um, apps are very inexpensive. You know, mm -hmm. I think it's like 10 or 15 bucks, something like that. Um, so, you know, that's the good news is like, it's not anything super crazy, but it is something that will be very, very vital to you. And it will make things a lot easier for you to have that set up. Um, and then again, once you have the Zoom set up, you can integrate it with your scheduler uh, so that people can choose whether they want to do over Zoom or, or you know, over the phone. Or if you're local, you could do an in-person thing if you'd like. Uh, but, you know, having those two things, I think those kind of work really well together uh, mm -hmm. to get your meeting set up. Mm-hmm. I agree. Um, I also think that, you know, while you kind of alluded to the idea of collecting payment, we do want to make sure that we recognize that we want you to get paid to do this. <laughs> we mm -hmm. don't want you out there doing it for free unless this is something that truly is just a 
service that you wanted to do. Um, so if you are getting paid, that means that you have to have either a way to collect that payment and or way more importantly, we want you to have a separate business account. So, mm -hmm. you know, we would be remiss to say, to not at least mention, hey, we want you to not commingle your stuff. So do not be putting all of your business stuff in with your personal finances. It will be a nightmare later on. And we want to just cut that off right at the knees as you're beginning. So uh, one of the really nice things is there are a lot of business accounts out there that are free. They're not all free though. So I want you to kind of do some research on them. Um, make sure that if they are free only with a minimum amount of, you know, money in there that you are able to sustain that minimum amount of money or ask around and find out what what accounts are free without any minimums? Like I can tell you when I started, I went to a local bank and you could probably try credit unions as well. But I went to a local bank where the it was an actual business account attached to our LLC. Um, mm -hmm. But it it was free as long as you didn't go into the branch. <laughs> so that sounds like a really weird thing. Right. Uh, but admittedly, Cody, I think I live probably 30 minutes from the nearest branch anyway. And I can do everything that I need to do, including making deposits and all that through my phone. So I didn't have to go into the bank. So, and it was nice because when I was just getting started, I didn't have $2,000 to just sit there in the account. You know, I started with what I had and at the time it was tens of dollars, not thousands of dollars. Right. So, um, right. so yeah, you can certainly be creative in finding something that is free. Um, so that's, I think that's one of the super important things. Yeah, I, I, I agree. Um, you know, keeping things, separate. And, you know, when we say separate, we're not saying to never take money from the business to pay yourself. Like, right. No, we're not, not saying what that. we're saying, but we're saying no. like, as far as organization goes, you do want to keep that separate so that everything's nice and clean. Um, mm -hmm. and a really good way of doing that is having a business account. Uh, and she's right. There are a lot of different options out there to have, you know, accounts that don't charge you or require a minimum. Uh, the bank that I work with, um, out where I'm at, that's how it is. You know, it's, there's, there's no sort of minimum. There's no fees. There's no nothing. Nice. It's just, here's your account, you know? Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, so having that would be really, really important too. Um, and you know, I also think that another thing that would be helpful is between collecting payments and talking to people and bringing on new clients and, you know, um, fielding your leads and all that kind of stuff. Like you need to stay organized, mm -hmm. right? So a way to stay organized to remember like who I'm talking to. So I talk to a lot of people, a lot of people every day. And um, if I didn't have some sort of system to where I knew who I was talking to, when I need to follow up with them, what we last spoke about, all that kind of stuff, then I would forget about some of these people simply because I talked to a lot of people mm -hmm. and with forgetting about them, they slipped through the cracks and that could have been a potential client of mine. Mm -hmm. Right. So I missed out on that opportunity. And even when I am working with clients, like there's going to be certain things like maybe like a, a note that I have, or, um, maybe I work up like a form for them after, our meetings that like encapsulate like what we talked about and what I want them to work on and stuff like that. Um, and not having some sort of system in place to keep everything organized is going to be very messy. Right? right. So I think that having some sort of structure, some sort of app that you can do that you can utilize um, to keep track of everyone and everything would also be very helpful. Um, yeah. So I use something called Trello. It's a free program. There is a paid version, but honestly, the free program is, it, it's Sufficient. awesome. You know, mm -hmm. it's, it's, it gets the job done, but it's just a good way to keep everything straight. You know, everyone that you're talking to, everything that you're working on, it's a really, really good system to get in place to just keep everything organized. And that's going to be your best friend because once things get so out of control that you're just working on untangling like this web of information in your head every day. That's when it starts to get like really overwhelming mm -hmm. and you don't want to do that. 
Yep. So. And I remember, I, I mean, let's get real. There's no way that I remember exactly when we did this. So uh, maybe our listeners can just go to YouTube and like type in Trello uh, and Financial Coaches Podcast. But I remember that we did an entire episode on your process that you use for Trello. And we got some mm-hmm. really great feedback on that. I know it was super helpful for people to literally just walk step by step on how to do this. So I do encourage you, if you're listening today and you're intrigued, maybe, I don't know the easiest way to find it, but I'm guessing maybe just go to YouTube, type in, you know, Financial Coaches Podcast Trello, and maybe it will come up. (laughs) Uh, Maybe we'll try to find it ourselves and maybe put it in the show notes because it really was a super valuable uh, podcast episode for our listeners. And I I really appreciate you doing that for us, Cody. So Mm -hmm. we'll have to find that again. Yeah. Or even just scrolling through the episodes and looking for something that sounds like that. Maybe Trello is not in the name of the episode, but it has to do with like, um, you know, organizing or following up with leads or something like that. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, It should be in there somewhere. Yeah. Uh, But that's a really, really important thing to have. Um, And that sometimes gets confused with like a CRM. Mm -hmm. So CRM, that stands for client relations manager. Right? I have that or right, cust- right? I, I think it might be customer relations manager. Customer but, relations. Okay. Yeah, right. but that's okay. It's the yeah. <laughs> same <Yeah>. letter. <laughs> kind of, yeah. So it's it's similar to a CRM, but it's it's not. Like, the way I use Trello is more so, of like, uh, just organization and lead follow-up, whereas, you know, I, the way I use a CRM is building, like, my list. Mm-hmm. So, like, an email list, sending out campaigns, um, you know, creating landing pages, all that kind of stuff. Um, that's what I kind of use CRMs for. And again, like having a CRM is definitely going to be something that you'll want to do eventually. Mm-hmm. I don't think that you'll, you know, have a, a financial coaching career for years and never use a CRM. Like at some point you're going to have a CRM. Is it absolutely necessary to have before you get started? No, no. In fact, I think that I went my first six months or a year without one. Mm-hmm. Um, so, you know, it's it's important to have, but it's not something that you absolutely need in order to get started. Yeah. The way I look at that is the last, the last word of that is manager, right? So uh, I think like so many other things, it's something that you want to bring into your life and your business when you are not able to manage it. So if you have one, two, or eight clients, you probably can easily manage that with something simple like Trello or you know, just whatever organizational tool you use. It's when you start getting so much business that you can't handle and manage that on your own anymore. That's when you're going to want to go and invest in something that will allow you to streamline that at that point. So it's kind of like when we talked about the scheduler, you know, in the beginning, we're like, well, I mean, technically, if you only have one or two people, you could manage that. You could manage your schedule, but being able to streamline that right away helps you with so many other things. So if we're looking at what, here's what we want to do, you guys, we want to make sure that we give you the tools that you need in order to get started, but we don't want to overwhelm you with so many tools that you're like, uh, I don't think I can ever start because I'll never get any of this together. So we're trying to highlight some of the ones that are almost absolutely necessary to begin. We have these few things in place before you start going out and getting clients and then act, go get those clients and build some of this other stuff after that. Yep, exactly. You don't want to be paralyzed with all of this. Yes. Like the, the most important thing is that you take action, right? Right. Um, but you know, we'll, we'll go back and we'll highlight like what are the, like the two or three that probably are necessary for you to have before you actually start taking action. And then, and then the other ones are things that you can kind of just work in as you get going. Right. Yep. So, um, but as far as a few options for CRMs, because I'm, I'm not sure if, you know, I would venture to say that most people are not super familiar with that. I know that I wasn't when I first Mm -hmm. looked into it, Mm -hmm. Um, but there's a lot of different ones out there. There's several out there, Um, but some that come to mind are Active Campaign, um, Entreport, Funneltopia, um, Kajabi, uh, MailChimp. Is MailChimp one? It is. Yep. MailChimp mm-hmm. is one. Um, so there's a lot of different options and really you just, you just need to look at like what works best for you. 
you know, mm-hmm. like what you like the best, what all these different ones offer, uh, you know, pricing, stuff like that. I personally use the active campaign. Mm-hmm. I think that it, it gets the job done. It's relatively, you know, the pricing on it is not too bad, which I like. Um, and it's easy to use on my end. Once you start using it and you get you know familiar with it, it's easy to use. When you first start, it's very confusing because <laughs> mm-hmm. there's so much that you can do with it. Mm-hmm. But once you kind of start using it, you kind of get into a good flow with it. I don't know what you guys use. Do you guys use a different one or do you guys use Active Campaign? We used to use Active Campaign specifically. Now we use Kajabi just because it has okay. more of the functionality of uh, like being able to house courses and stuff. So we want that mm-hmm. functionality. So we, we upgraded to that. It is a little bit more of an investment though. Yeah. So I, I wouldn't I know say you have to start there. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Awesome. So yeah, I mean, having a CRM definitely helpful. Not something that you absolutely need right away, but something you could work into. But something that I do think that you would want to have before you actually start working with people is just a few foundational tools Mm. for your coaching. Mm -hmm. So, for example, one that one that we're kind of talking about would be like something as simple as just having some sort of like budget sheet for people to to use. Because like, you know, the last thing that you'll want to do is like have a call with someone, enroll them as a client, bring them on, have your first meeting or your second meeting. And then they're like, okay, cool. Like let's, let's start digging into these finances. Let's get things like set up for a budget. And then you don't have anything for them to plug and play with. Right. And you're just kind of like, all right, <laughs> let's create one together. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> like you want to have something there to where like you have some foundational tools to give the clients, to allow them to start making the progress. Um, so that, you know, you're not just kind of floundering throughout the whole process. Yeah. The good news here, I think, Cody, is that most people who are considering becoming a financial coach use some of these tools in their own lives. And yep. so it could be something as simple as clearing out what it is that you use, you know, saving a new copy or whatever, clean copy, clearing it out and starting with that. So it's not like we we don't want you to be paralyzed and think, you know, it has to be this wonderful thing that, you know, is super creative and, and different from what else is out there. It's okay to start with what you have and just make it something that's usable for someone else. Yep. Yep, exactly. And that's a really good point. Uh, something like the budget sheet could be something that you use personally. Now, mm-hmm. if you use an app, um, that might be a little bit more difficult. Yeah. And you might need to create something uh, because, you know, what you'll want to do is you'll want to have it set up so that they can use it. They, the client, can mm-hmm. use it, but that you also have access to it so you can look at it um, at any point and help them or, you know, make adjustments with them and stuff like that. So you don't want something that, like, they have through an app, but you don't have access to their account and you can't look at it and stuff like that. Like you want to be able to be involved. And then, you know, once you're done working with them, you can just give them full ownership of it. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, if you want to, you know, keep in touch with them and maybe they, they want to work with you in the future, you can just keep access to it and you just won't look at it uh, unless you're working with them kind of thing. Mm -hmm. But having a system so that both of you can look at it and work on it is really important. Yeah. Um, so I know that uh, Google is something that's quite available for a lot of mm-hmm. people, uh, you know, because you can share documents and sheets and that kind of stuff. I also know of people who are like, mm, Google knows too much and I don't want to use Google. And I'm curious, do you know of anything else that would allow some of that shared capability that is not necessarily Google? Um, I'm sure there are. Um, okay. but you use, Google? I just haven't done research on it. Okay. I personally use Google docs. Okay. Um, yeah. And most yeah. people that I know also do, uh, I do as well, but I just, I have increasingly been hearing people go, I don't, I don't want anything to do <laughs> with what Google does. And I didn't know if you right. happen to have an alternative. It's okay that you don't. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sure that there are, you just need to do a little bit of research, but you know, if you're okay with Google, mm-hmm. cool. You yeah. know, it, it works really, really well. I really like the Google Sheets, the Google Docs. Um, mm-hmm. It makes it very easy for for us as coaches, but also the clients. Yeah. So having something like that is definitely helpful. So I agree, and I like that you can edit 
you can give, I'm sorry, I like that you can give permission to edit or just to view or, you know, to be complete mm-hmm. owners and that kind of stuff. So uh, I just, I love the flexibility that that offers, especially given the suggestion that you had about you can share for a while and then release complete ownership and or take that back. So, um, mm-hmm. okay, very good. If any of you listeners know of something that's out there that's not Google, absolutely feel free to school us on that because we'll be yeah. happy to share that information. <laughs> Yeah. All right. So just to kind of recap, um, I think, and Maria, you, you tell me if you think differently, but you know, we, we threw a lot at you today yeah. and, you know, again, we want to reiterate that the last thing that we want to do is to throw so much at you that you feel overwhelmed and you feel like you can't get started because you don't know where to start or, you know, you feel like you need to get all these things in place in order to start that's not the case. We're just telling you about some of the stuff that is going to be necessary to start, but also some stuff that would be helpful once you get started. Mm-hmm. And I want to kind of split those into two different lists. Before we do that, though, can I add one or two things to the list? Yeah. Is that okay? Okay. Um, I just, th- I don't think that we touched on any sort of business entity and or uh, like domain. And I know we've done mm-hmm. a pretty lengthy episode about do you really need a website and that kind of stuff. Uh, but I do want to s- at least put this on the list. We can decide which list, which column it goes into. But on the list, I want you guys to think about, um, you know, having a domain so that it's not just everything being sent to, you know, XYZ financial coach at gmail.com. That does, that's one of those things that helps to legitimize us a little bit. Uh, but also with regards to the LLC, I'll tell you, that's actually one of the th- first things I did before I even brought on clients and even Mm -hmm. before beta clients. And the re I'll just tell you the reason that I did it. uh, And then I'll also let you know that in Arizona where I'm located, it is very, very inexpensive and super simple to set up an LLC. So I'm prefacing this with that because if you're in a state where it's way expensive or a lot tougher, I understand if you're having to weigh those pros and cons a little bit more, but in our state, super simple. And the reason behind it was because I wanted to separate my liability from my, whatever was happening in my business from all my personal stuff. I didn't want, especially because we're dealing with money and we're in a, you know, litigious society. I didn't want someone to come at me and say, well, she did X, Y, and Z and it caused me to go bankrupt. And so now I'm going to sue her for everything she has. They can still do that, but now they're just going to sue me for everything my business has and they don't get to touch my personal stuff. So I just wanted to throw that out there because, um, you know, we are dealing with uh, some pretty sensitive material with individuals in this particular arena. And a lot of times when we go there, people can get pretty emotional. So use that when you're weighing your pros and cons. Uh, and I, I, th- I do think that if you're going to do any sort of entity right now, LLC is sufficient. You don't need to do an S corp or go crazy trying to figure that out. But LLC stands for limited liability corporation. And so it just keeps the liability close to your hip rather than into your deep pockets of your personal finances. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I would agree. And I would say that that's probably one that you would want to make a priority. All right. So I'm glad I brought it up then. Fantastic. Yep. Yep. So that, now we can separate these <laughs> into yeah. different columns. <laughs> yeah. That, and then also the business account go hand in hand, right? Yes. Um, Cause once you have the LLC, you know, you'll have your EIN and mm-hmm. then the natural next step is just opening up a bank account. Right. Yes. So that would be one. Um, I also think that the two that go hand to hand that are really, really important to have before you start, reaching out to people, uh, would be having the scheduler and your zoom set up as well. Mm -hmm. I think that that's very, very important. You know, it makes things easier for you to schedule meetings, but also host meetings. Yeah. And if, and, and I know that Cody gave a really good argument for why zoom is important, the paid version of it. But if you're still skeptical about that, at least set up the free one. So you can, you know, can set that up with your scheduler, like he just said. Um, and, you know, it might be three months before you have somebody. I don't know. But at least you'll have the ability to meet with someone for 40 minutes. And I'd be lying if I didn't tell you that there have been times when I'm like, oh, totally ran out of time. And now we need to, you know, just hang up and call right back in. <laughs> so there's no shame in that. If that's if that's one of the things that you're like, I have this amount of money that I'm able to invest right now. And these are the priorities. At least set up a free one. Mm-hmm. 
Yep. I think I did that a few times when I was first starting. Yeah. Um, and it's okay. Nobody yeah. said, oh my gosh, you're so not a great coach. You know, um, they figured it out that, that, that it's okay. Anyway, yep. go on. <laughs> yep. and, I, and I think that the other ones that are good to have, but aren't like absolutely necessary before you start reaching out to people and having meetings with people, um, meetings, meaning like consultations with people, um, would be, you know, the Trello. So something to organize things, um, the CRM, which is like organization to the max. Mm -hmm. Uh, and then also, um, the foundational tools, like a budget sheet, something like that. Uh, because like with the, with the foundational tools, you can, you can have consultations before you even need the tools. Mm -hmm. And then once you bring on a client, then you can be like, okay, now that I have a client on and we're starting you know, next week or two weeks out. Now I have some time to get that prepped, mm-hmm. right? So it's not necessary in order for you to like launch your business or market your business or start telling people or start having conversations, but it will be something that you want to have very shortly after you start talking to people and you start mm-hmm. bringing people on. Same thing with the CRM, not something that you need right away. As you start building a clientele, it will be something that you want to uh, have so that you can be organized and you can send out email campaigns and make landing pages and create courses and stuff like that. But again, a little bit more down the line. And then the organizational piece of things, you know, if you're only talking to a handful of people and you can manage that, cool. But once you start talking to more and more and more people as your business grows and you start putting yourself out there, then it will probably be a good idea to get that up and running. Yeah. And I think especially since, well, you mentioned Trello and, you know, whatever it is that you decide you want to use, it's fine. Um, But if you're going to use something, go ahead and set that up ahead of time. Like it's okay to set it up before you bring on people. Just realize that you're going to be developing your process as you go along. So like Cody had an amazing way of doing things, but Cody didn't wake up one day before having clients and go, I'm going to do it this way. And this is how it's going to work. That was something that developed over time. It was based on what his clients were doing. It was based on what his needs were for his family and himself. And so those things are going to just develop as you go. So don't feel like you have to, you know, have it all put together. In fact, if you have it there, if you just have Trello open, for example, and you get your first couple clients, then you can start saying, how do I use this? How, what that will actually make sense to me. And if you build it when it's small, it'll be a lot easier to manage as it gets bigger. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, I agree. So, all right. So you guys have a few action steps to take. Yep. Now take it's up to you. <laughs> Are you going to take these steps? Are you going to actually start this process? Um, We encourage you to, but of course, if you have more questions or need some extra support or, you know, even just need to like get over like a mindset thing, uh, you're more than welcome to reach out to either one of us. Um, And you can do that through the Facebook group, like I mentioned at the top of the episode. Mm -hmm. Um, Or I believe that we we have our scheduling links in the show notes as well. Um, so, you know, if you ever want to hop on a call and just discuss things or how to take things next to the next level, uh, you're more than welcome to do that as well. So, um, so yeah, so thank you guys so much for listening, Maria. Thank you for the awesome conversation. Yeah, it was awesome. So (laughs) we will catch you guys next week for another episode of the financial coaches podcast. Take care guys. Bye-bye. Thank you for listening to the Financial Coaches Podcast, brought to you by New Money Habits and Sizemore Financial Coaching. Submit your questions to our hosts by emailing podcast at newmoneyhabits.com. Be sure to subscribe to be notified of future episodes and join our growing group of like-minded coaches on Facebook. And until next time, happy coaching. Music provided by Summer School.